Hey guys, it's Miss O'Neill here today. We're going to be doing a really fun lesson about owls. Uh, and you're going to need a few supplies for this lesson, but these are not something that are that is expensive or anything that um, is hard to come by. Usually you can find these supplies at maybe Walmart or sometimes you can even find um, the Dollar Tree. And you'll want to have some model magic clay. One pack is plenty. And some type of water-based markers to add your color. I'm using Crayola. These are great washable markers, really easy to come by, kind of cheap. Uh, so you can, if you can get some model magic clay and some Crayola markers, you will be able to do our project for today because we will be doing a little owl sculpture out of the model magic after we go through and look at a few owl artworks for some inspiration for us. Uh, so first of all, let's check out um, some owls and here we've got a little owl sculpture and you can see he's looking at the computer which is what we've been doing a lot lately if uh, you've been virtual all school year or even if you're not virtual all school year we've all been looking at the computer screen uh, so this is a more modern art sculpture of an owl and then you have a photograph of a barred owl which we actually have those living in Tennessee around us a few facts about owls. There are more than 150 species of owls in the world. Owls have binocular vision, so they can really see well. Owls are found in all different types of habitats, and several owl species have ear tufts on their head. So they are actually um, tufts of feathers like ears is what we see. They're not horns coming out of an owl's head. A barn owl can eat up to a thousand mice every year. Wow, that's a lot of rodents. This is one of my favorite owl poems. My mother used to tell me this one all the time growing up, and it is called That Wise Old Owl. And wise, you know, actually means intelligent or smart. A wise old owl sat in an oak. The more he saw, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why can't we be like that wise old bird? There's a lot said in that poem, boys and girls. That's teaching us um, to sit and watch and listen. And the more we do that, the wiser we can become. Owls in art. Owls have been in art for hundreds of thousands of years. So here you can see some of the different renditions of owls through time. Um, the one over to the far left that has a lot of blue tones, is a more modern piece of artwork about an owl. The middle picture is from a British artwork that was done several hundred years ago. And the white owl was actually done in 1905. And it's a chalk pastel drawing of an owl. These are some of the ancient owl artworks that can be found. This petroglyph, which is a carving into a rock, was salvaged along the Columbia River. Um, and so it is in Washington. This is actually an American Indian drawing of an owl. And you can see it's, uh, it's probably quite old, thousands of years old. Then over to the side, you have a sculpture of ancient Chinese owl. So all across the world, owls have been in art for many, many years through many cultures. And these are some more fun owl sculptures. Through the 60s and 70s in the United States, owls were very popular in vintage, and now they are considered vintage artwork. And you can see um, this one that is kind of brown over to the side by himself is actually from a McCoy pottery collection. Uh, and it's a vintage cookie jar. And then the smaller owls are more modern sculptures of owl art, and they're kind of comical and look a little cartoonish, but a lot of fun design ideas there. So now that you've looked at some inspiration, we're going to be creating our own owl sculpture. If you do not have the materials to do this uh, for today, this is something you can come back to later. But again, you can purchase Model Magic 
at usually Walmart, any type of arts and crafts store, or um, even sometimes the Dollar Tree has packs for a dollar. So if you need to uh, get those supplies ready, this is a good time to do that. And then I will give you instructions on creating a 3D owl sculpture. All right, guys, get your supplies ready. And remember, that will be some model magic clay and washable markers of any type. Crayola works great. Um, the model magic looks something like this. You can actually find it sometimes at the dollar store or the dollar tree for a dollar a pack. So it's not a real expensive thing to do. Um, and you're going to open up your pack and get your clay ready. So... What I like to do when I get started with any type of clay project is to separate my pieces out. I'm going to separate to about four pieces, which is probably more than I'll need. And then I'm going to add my color. So you want to kind of flatten your clay a little bit and just color straight onto the clay. Then you're going to take it and fold it up like a taco. And that meaning we want to put the ink on the inside of the taco. So where your meat and your good stuff is, that's on the inside of your taco, not on the outside, or you'd be in a big mess. Uh, same thing with the ink. We want to keep it on the inside and fold it up. And then I'm going to use my hands and my fingers to kind of knead and smash up the clay and make it um, blend and soften. And this is really going to help me be able to mold it into whatever shape I need it to mold into. Uh, the more that you warm it up and blend it, the easier it is to manipulate. So I have kind of a weird piece now. I'm going to roll it up using the palm of my hand and create a sphere shape. And that will make it smooth and make all of my pieces that I create not have a lot of cracks or weird things going on with them. So I'm going to color another piece again. We color it, we fold it up like a taco, and then we continue to blend and knead the color into the clay. If it's not quite dark enough, you can do it multiple times until you reach the color um, depth that you want. And really, the, the more you color, the darker it will get. And as long as you continue to knead it and blend it in this way, the color will stay in the clay. Now, I like to use the palm of my hand because that is naturally already kind of round and smooth. And it will help if I put the clay into the palms of both of my hands and roll in a circular motion. We don't want to use our fingertips. Your fingertips are really kind of rough and bumpy and not round. Um, your palm already has a natural roundness to it, which will help you create a better sphere or ball. So let me do a little orange. And so we've got a good variety of color. At least three colors is a good thing to start with because you have different pieces for your owl that you'll want to make, your eyes, your beak, your wings. So again, I'm just going to blend. And if the markers do get on your fingers a little bit, which sometimes happens, um, it's washable. So no big deal. Again, I'm rolling it up and blending it and making my sphere. And we're going to get ready to create another or an owl sculpture. So let me pick a color for my body. I think I'm just going to use this light kind of pinkish color. And I want to make a cylinder type shape. So I'm going to take and roll my ball and kind of put a little pressure so that it flattens out a little bit on the side so it's not so round. And use my thumb to smooth that out. And I've created a little cylinder or a can shape. Take your fingers and pinch one end. I'm going to pinch the one end and then the other of that top of that cylinder to create ears. And then I'm going to smash my owl flat. Now, you can always use your fingers to manipulate and change the shapes. And if you mess up, the great thing about clay, just roll it back into a ball and start again and keep going and practice. Practice makes perfect, just like with sports. Art is the same way. The more you do, the better you get. All right, so now I'm going to make two similar sized pieces of clay, and I'm going to roll those into a nice smooth ball, just like we did before, but on a smaller scale. Use your finger to pinch one side of that ball so that we have a raindrop or a teardrop shape. 
Now it's pretty thick, so I'm going to smash it flat again. Just kind of use my finger and smash it flat. And I've got two wings for my owl. Now I also need to make his eyes, his beak, his toes. So again, I'm using a sphere shape and pinching the end so I have what looks like a raindrop or a tear chop shape, kind of triangular for his um, beak. And then two little bitty small pieces for his eyes. We don't want to make too big of pieces because then your owl will have really big eyes, uh, which owls already do kind of have really big eyes. So if that happens too, that's all right. It'll still look good. I'm going to place those and then use my finger to gently smash them into place. Now, you can use your marker after you've blended your colors. You can use your markers or a pen, gel pens even are awesome with this, um, to draw in some feather details. I'm going to make some feathers on the belly and the wings. And, of course, I did the eyeballs because it's a lot easier to draw those little eyeballs than it is. But you could also use clay for that. You would just have to have some really small pieces. And we're going to do our little toes. So again, oh, and I'm going, you know, why don't we add a little eyebrows on there? That'll give our owl some expression. And again, I'm just using a teeny tiny piece, giving him some little eyelids or eyebrows for some expression. And now I'm going to create some toes. So I'll get a little small sphere shape again. And you can use your fingernail. You can use a pencil. You can use a marker to create some little lines on, a, on um, a little ball shape of clay, and then you've got toes. So there's my little owl. Let me touch up his eyeball a little bit so it's a little bit more round. And there he is. He is ready to be shown off. Now, if this sits for about overnight, maybe a day, 24 hours or so, it will harden up and hold its shape. Um, and this is a great little... You could, you could make it into a refrigerator magnet or just keep it as a little figurine. Um, give it to your mom if she likes owls, any of that kind of stuff. Now, I'm going to show you another way um, that you can use to make an owl. Of course, you don't have to use my way. If you find your own way, that's, that's good too. But there's another way I know, and I'm going to show you that. Um, if you just... I, we're going to need a bigger piece of clay. So I smashed two pieces together. I took a green and an orange, and I'm going to roll it into a sphere. And I think I'm going to leave this one a little bit marbleized or where you don't see the color blended as well. Sometimes I like that effect. So I'm going to kind of use my fingers and gently flatten this out. Not too, not too thin, but just enough. It's like a little pancake, a little pancake shape. Now, a marker is an awesome tool for pressing into the clay to make owl feathers. So I'm going to use the tip of my marker top and press it into the clay and create what looks like little owl feathers. And this will be the owl's belly. And this technique uses a folding of the clay. So we're going to be taking the sides first and folding them inwards and kind of pressing down a little bit, and you want to leave a little bit of the belly showing there, and that's going to be the owl's wings, and then I'm going to grab the top and fold it down. Now, while I fold it down, I'm also going to grab the edges and pinch them upwards to create the owl's ears. So again, this still gives me a really cool little owl shape. It's just a totally different technique to doing it. Um, and we're really just using one piece of clay to create the head and the wings. And we can add our eyes and our beak and our feet, similar to how we did with our other owls. So let me add my eyes first. Put some eyeballs in there. Owls are so cute. I love their little owl eyes peering at us. And you know, they have really good vision. And I'll stick on a beak. Uh, you know, I'm not liking that because it's a little too big. So let me make a smaller one. And again, I just rolled a ball and pinched one edge of it so it has a teardrop shape. And then I'm going to stick it right there under the eyes. Okay. Now, I'm going to take another little ball. And I'm going to create his foot. I'm using my fingernail again to make little toes. And this owl has some blue feet. 
and blue eyes. He must be a, a blue owl variety. In the art world, we can make up our own owl varieties, can't we? And then we're going to put our other foot on there. And here we have our little folded owl. Oh, he's so cute. So we've made a little folded owl. And he's got a marbleized color with some green and orange. And then here's our first owl we created. Both of them have their own charming cuteness to them. I hope you enjoyed making an owl with me today. Please post your finished artwork on your seesaw class and come back, like, and subscribe.